Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. I am first and foremost an esports junkie. I've been playing competitive games my whole life. But let's first talk about esports. Like I'd say five years ago, esports had the same buzz around it that AI and Web3 has now, right? Tons of smart people were investing, and everyone saw this fast growing uh, industry, you know? And we, we felt the buzz. Esports was real. Fast forward now, and the Financial talks about esports have changed drastically, right? Gone are those aggressive evaluations. Gone are the tons of VCs that would just throw a money at you. And let's face it, no one wants to pay $10 million for a franchised league spot. Um, what we learned quickly is that the people who really gained from modern esports were the pros at the very top and the publishers, the uh, developers themselves. But even with that all said, I'm confidently saying that esports is here to stay. Esports isn't going anywhere. It's going to pivot, it's going to shrink, it's going to fracture as it needs, as it always will. But eSports is about a shared reverence of gaming skill. And that's always been around, that's going to be around as long as there are gamers who want to beat each other. And even today, even though eSports may falter and rise, gamers are still doing their thing. They're meeting in expo halls, convention centers, college dorms, I mean literally everywhere. And they're, they're playing games you've never heard of, some big, some small. But what's important is the aggressiveness in which they compete. They really want to win. It's a passionate thing. And in fact, this isn't the first recession that esports has been through. Actually, a recession is what created esports. It was the fuel that started this whole thing. So let's have a quick esports history lesson. In 1997, there was a huge financial crash, and it hit South Korea particularly hard. The chemical and heavy uh, machinery jobs that employed tons of talented uh, South Koreans, gone overnight. So what did these young professionals do when they were depressed? Well, they took all of their old office uh, computers and put them in to land cafes. This creates the first PC bong. And they got lucky because the game that they got for free from a blizzard as an act of uh, generosity was StarCraft. It just so happens to be one of the most competitive sound games ever. The rest is history. A entire a community of masters, coaches, and people who earned the respect and uh, admiration of entire culture was born. So I bring up that story because it's a reminder. Esports was born from a community, young people who shared a culture and were kind of given nothing by the world. They were seeking meaning. They were seeking something real, and they were seeking competitive, uh, a competition. Now, we see this culture has now like blown up. It's everywhere. It's online. And there's a real economy about it. If you're good at games, you get clout. You get followers. You have this digital Irrelevance, and you can talk to high schools all over the US. It's no longer a foreign concept to talk about high level game strategy, high level coaches. The students know what that means and what it entails. So let's first, a modern example, let's take Valorant, Riot Esports, right? The tippy top has about room for 20 pros, right? But beneath that, there's a tier two, a tier scene that's much bigger. These are the the dream seekers, the people that define their very online existence on chasing the esports dream. And even beneath them, there's a tier three. It gets even bigger. Now, these dream chasers, what do they have? YouTube channels, uh, Twitch channels, they have tweets, they're the content creators, part of that creator um, economy. And what they're really doing is spreading the lifestyle. They're spreading the culture of esports that, again, isn't going anywhere. What this spreading does, it makes playing Valorant different, too. It's a nuanced social experience to play Valorant with your friends. Why? Because if you're good, you're a little more popular. You're a little more, you have some clout to you. And that matters. It matters when you instill meaning into this um, generation's largest um, entertainment industry. Without that eSports, it's hard for gaming to really stick as this consumer lifestyle thing that people talk about. Esports is the thing that gets people comparing notes, that gets people saying, oh, did you see that X? And what I really love is esports is about social um, a community. You know, when you combine the uh, reverence for a mastery of a game system with authentic social um, dynamics, there's magic there. Maybe it's awe, too. I actually thought that was, too. There's an awe when you see that, and everyone gets it. We saw it in... Um, 1997, when uh, Koreans were so um, depressed, we even saw it in the um, arcade scene of the North American uh, 2000s, West and East Coast, right? These were scenes that had zero uh, budgets and almost zero um, developer support, and yet they persisted. We saw the same community um, resilience during um, COVID-19, in which a rise of social games and online esports tourneys were everywhere. And really, why that matters, and why I like to frame esports as not so much an industry, 
not so much an industry, but a community, is because gaming is the industry. Esports has been a community far before people have tried to make millions and millions of dollars off it. So that's my talk. I'm an esports advocate, and thanks for being here. <laughs>